Out of our deep respect for Indigenous peoples in Canada, we acknowledge that all Toronto Catholic District School Board properties are situated upon traditional territories of the Anishinaabeg, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat peoples. We also acknowledge the land covered by Treaty 13 is held by the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and Toronto is subject to the Dish with One Spoon Covenant. We also recognize the contributions and enduring presence of all First Nation, Métis, and Inuit peoples in Ontario and the rest of Canada. Good afternoon, parents, honored guests, graduates, staff, and friends of Francis Lieberman Catholic Secondary School. Congratulations to you all who are in attendance here today. Graduates for your perseverance and hard work, teachers for your encouragement and dedication, and especially to you, the parents, for the guidance and support you gave your children and the sacrifices you made that have led them here today. By all accounts, this has not been your average year, and you all know what I'm referring to, COVID. As I sat down to write this message, I said to myself that I would not dwell on the pandemic because it's affected us all in so many different ways. It's been a constant and reoccurring theme in our daily lives over the last year and a half. So let's do this. Let's put the pandemic aside and focus on what's next, what's next to come in your journey. Today is a time to rejoice, for all have come a long way in your individual journeys to this point where I'm sure some of you thought you would never come. You've worked hard, you've worked hard today, and we are here to celebrate your accomplishments. As the old adage goes, it takes a village to raise a child. Nothing could be more true. Take a moment and look around you right now. See who makes up the people around you. These are the people, including your teachers, who make up the many members of our village. And they've been helped in so many ways to shape and mold the people that you are today. To the parents and guardians in the audience, this afternoon, I want to say to you that you have raised wonderful children. Now young adults, ready to go forth and seize the many opportunities that are available to them. The sacrifices you have made for your children simply cannot be measured or weighed. They are found in the words that your children speak and in the actions by which your children live. A true testament to the love and devotion you have shown your children throughout their formative years. Parents, you should be applauded for this. In this day and age, raising children couldn't be more difficult. As my parents made sacrifices for my sister and I, so have all the parents here tonight made sacrifices for you. Remember, that one constant in an ever-changing world is that the love your parents have for you will never change. You can always depend on it. You owe it to your parents to be the best that you can be. I know your parents are so very proud of you at this very moment. To our staff, teachers, educational assistants, CYWs, custodians, office assistants, and administrative team, I thank you. Thank you for caring and in many cases going above and beyond in your duties to help students achieve success in all that they do. You are true inspirations to them. Graduates, I have come to know many of you as the compassionate, socially driven, caring, tolerant individuals that try to do the right thing whenever they face adversity. Today, we are here to celebrate an important rite of passage in your lives the culmination of a process which began four years ago. Believe me when I say that this process is far from complete. In fact, it's just beginning. It will continue into your post-secondary school years, and I firmly believe it will continue for the rest of your life. You have chosen to be educated in the Catholic system. Well, guess what? Now God is calling upon you. He's calling upon you to be the ambassadors of his word. You're being called upon to be selfless and display true acts of kindness and compassion, acts that will serve to make this world a better place. When faced with challenges and temptations, have the strength not to follow the crowd and learn to listen to that inner voice that's telling you to do the right thing. Learn to accept good counsel and do not be too quick to judge those around you for everyone has a story and that story should be heard. This year has really shown us that. 
This is a world where some face disparity. Be that person that stands up for the rights of others. Be that person and not necessarily that person who's always going to be popular with the decisions that they have made. Most importantly, seek advice and guidance from your parents, for with age comes much wisdom. It has been said that the course of life is not determined by the talents you were given, but by the choices you make. This rings true for us all, because life is about making choices. Today, that life is about choices seems so obvious. To say that really seems so obvious. However, it should really go into a category of things that go without saying. However, to many people, the process of making choices is all not that simple or clear. What I'm trying to tell you is that you cannot have it all. Having it all is apparently what many people are about today. They multitask, they're connected 24 seven via cell phones, they dash from meeting to meeting, squeezing their schedules, rushing to fit the job, family, golf, vacations, work, lunches, and on and on and on. It's a life that is so hectic that they cannot find a moment to figure out what having it all really means. If I could suggest one thing, it would be to slow down. Take in all that God has to offer you and then make an informed choice. Graduates, choose your friends carefully. Cherish them. Always be honest with them. Communicate with them often. Make them laugh because they may not remember what you did to them, nor what you said to them, but they will always remember how you made them feel. And finally, the best advice I can give already exists and has been said through this poem by Arthur Max Emmerich. Go placidly amid the noise and the haste, and remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as possible without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly, and listen to others, even the dull and the ignorant. They too have their story. Be yourself, especially do not feign affection, neither be cynical about love, for in the face of all adversity and disenchantment is the perennial as grass. Take kindly the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Nurture, strengthen of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune, but do not distress yourself with imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have the right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you convince him to be, and whatever your labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace with your soul. With all, it's a sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, this is a beautiful world. Graduates, my wish for you is that life becomes all that you want it to be, your dreams stay big, your worries stay small, and that you never carry more than you can hold. Francis Lieberman graduates, go forth and discover the world. I wish each and every one of you much prosperity and success with your life as more to come. To make your own mark, make it in this ever-changing world. May God bless you in all of your future endeavors. Francis Lieber and graduates, the best of luck to you. Thank you. Dear graduating class of 2021, congratulations to you all. Before I pray the opening prayer, I would like to share a few words with you all. Definitely this pandemic has afflicted everyone and has challenged you in particular. It has created lots of disruption, caused confusion, disappointment, and frustration. It may have interfered with your plans, reshaped your vision of the future, 
and affected all your planned goodbyes. But one of the things that we at Lieberman are so proud of and applaud you all for is that in the midst of this disruption, you have worked so hard to arrive at this moment. You have adjusted to the pressures and in the words of St. Paul, you have successfully crossed the finish line. Be proud of you, celebrate you, and appreciate you. While you look into the future filled with hope and aspirations, recognize your sacrifices and recognize the sacrifices of those who have helped you come to this happy juncture. Look around you with hearts full of gratitude for the bonds of family, the bonds of friends and loved ones, the bonds of teachers and mentors. For gratitude is the best attitude. So today, all of us at Liberman give God thanks for the past four years or so that you have spent as a falcon. And now I will lead you in prayers. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Loving God, we thank you for the gifts of our graduates. You have blessed them during their years at Lieberman with wisdom, friendships, and skills. We pray that you give them faith and a sense of purpose in their next steps and grant them the courage to step toward that purpose. Empower them to walk into the future with hope, faith, and great love guided by your light. And may this celebration today be a reflection of the blessings that we find in knowing and loving you. For this is the day that you have made. We all are glad and we rejoice in it. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Good afternoon, parents and guardians, administration, staff of Francis Lieberman, and graduates. Just in case you don't know me or recognize me without a mask, glasses, or my hair tied up, my name is Michelle Chin, and I am honored to represent the graduating class of 2021. Now, fellow graduates, let me get one thing clear. Surprise, it's not January anymore, nor is it 2020. It's actually June 2021 and now we're graduating. I find it amazing that we showed up to our first day of high school four years ago, standing crammed in the foyer of our new school in our freshly bought, slightly overpriced uniform from McCarthy's, waiting for our timetables. The sky was the limit. We were super cool high schoolers, and nothing could stop us, except for the VPs if you were walking in the halls during Old Canada in the morning. It's strange we thought that high school would last a long time. Well, the first two and a half years breezed by, and I thought the trend would continue like that. Probably exponential growth or something, like time on the x-axis and speed on the y. But in all honesty, this last year and a half has felt like the wackiest school year of the 14 we've had. It was very short, yet very long. It's been monotonous and stressful at times. The same routine of waking up, sitting in front of our computer for school, taking a short break, scrolling through social media on our phones for a couple hours, study, repeat for the whole year. I get it. I'm well aware that this probably isn't the graduation ceremony or grade 12 year we envisioned. It definitely wasn't what I was expecting. Unfortunately, there were no high school musical-esque song and dance numbers that occurred at random. The closest I got was seeing Visa practicing in the hall after school. Oh well, but what can we do? We're in the midst of a global pandemic and we're all making history right now. Who knows, maybe in a couple years, history textbooks will tell the next generation of students about the trials and tribulations that came along with laggy Wi-Fi and Zoom meetings. So, class of 2021, we made it. We may be banged up and bruised, but we survived. We're finally at the end of our high school journey. Now, this wouldn't be a proper valedictorian speech if I didn't add some sort of motivational antidote. So I'm gonna talk about books, as if we hadn't had enough of them already. Graduates, did you know that we're all authors? Right this instant, as you sit on your bed, couch, or chair, and listen to me talk, you're all writing a long and detailed autobiography about your life. It's a huge book, definitely not one that you could carry to the fourth floor of the school. However, people love to say that high school is the end, like the end of our teenage years before we become adults in the real world. Yikes. But I'd like to say that high school is certainly not the end of our autobiography. It is the end of one chapter, and also the beginning of another. It sounds cliche, but I swear it's true. Every single one of you has persevered these past few years, especially during the pandemic, where each of us embodied our school's motto, steadfast in the midst of change, and continue to work right until the end. Sure, there were days when we struggled and wanted to give up so badly, but you didn't. We didn't. We kept moving forward. We kept writing our stories. And that's the great thing about being part of such an amazing school community. Despite the fact that we've all worn the same 80% cotton, 40% polyester sweater, also known as the Lieberman uniform, each and every one of us has had unique experiences which make up the high school chapter in our lives. Graduates, whether you're aware of it or not, every single person has appeared in someone else's book. It could be for a brief moment or a significantly longer one. We've all shaped each other for better or for worse. So now, as we look back, we can acknowledge everything that has happened these past four years. Everyone's chapters may look slightly different, but I'd say the format stays the same. Just like an MLA essay, 12 times New Roman, double-spaced. For example, some of you may have moments that are written in all caps. These are the memories that represent some sort of victory, something you're proud of. It could be getting 100 on a project, the end of a successful concert or performance, winning a tournament, or going to OFSA. It could even be beating the boss in a video game, or even just getting up in the morning. Struggle is real sometimes. Some of you may have crinkled and tear-stained pages. I know for sure I do. These represent the frustration and the countless hours that we poured into stressing over enthalpy problems, anything related to physics, derivatives, or even cramming essays the day they're due. All the time we spent sitting in front of our computers, staring at a screen and feeling anxious, and wondering when we were ever going to see our friends again. However, there are other pages composed of really normal, yet really memorable events of our time in the Lieberman building. For example, praying you had enough change for a calf cookie, 
trying to remember if it was a day one or a day two, Woodside runs for jerk chicken poutine, dreading exams at the end of the year, complaining about the lack of air conditioning in the main building, and niner clogs in the hallways. My personal favorite is from the science department's lab safety video that they show every single year. Hopefully you should recall what to do when you spill corrosive chemicals all over yourself. I think this quote will help jog your memory. Head for the safety shower as soon as possible. Don't let modesty make your injury worse. With that aside, look at the people we've developed into over these past few years. Even though we may not feel it, we've definitely grown academically, athletically, artistically, socially, and maybe even physically. Scratch me for that last one. We're the resourceful and resilient class of 2021. And I don't think we could have gotten here without the help of a lot of people. I'd like to thank all the family members who have supported us in everything we've done throughout our high school years. Shout out to my parents for all their love and support as well. I'd like to thank the administration, teachers and staff of Francis Lieberman for helping us to receive a quality education in a caring environment, especially during these unprecedented times. We've learned a lot from all of you. Now I'm sure that everyone has certain teachers and people they'd like to thank, but here are a few of mine. To Ms. Wakelin, thank you for sparking my love of biology. Oxygen is extremely attractive, and my understanding of COVID-19 has been enhanced by my knowledge of retroviruses and RNA replication. To Ms. Montero, thank you for making the French portable feel like home. It sucks we were unable to go on the Europe trip, but I'm grateful for all the memories I made in your class. To Mr. Champion, I don't know where to start. Thank you for teaching me how to breathe and believe in myself. You've taught me so much about life and about music during our four years together. Thank you to my campaign manager and everyone who has helped me develop ideas for my speech. I would have probably put this until the very last minute if it wasn't for them. They are a huge reason of why I'm able to speak today. And lastly, thank you to all the people who have learned to read my chicken scratch, cursive-like handwriting. I think it's rather nice. Y'all know who you are, and I'm glad I met each and every one of you. Now, I swear I'm done talking, but I'm back to my book analogy. Graduates, as I mentioned a while ago, you're all authors. Only you can write your story. No one else can write it for you. Your next chapter may look like university or college or work. It may involve relationships, a family, adventuring or dream chasing. Anything is up for grabs. The future is a big, scary blob of uncertainty and it's okay to say, I don't know. A prime example is when your parents ask you when you're going to move out, to which you can reply, I don't know. But in all honesty, it's okay to not be sure. Embrace uncertainty. Nothing will ever go according to plan. We're all broke authors who don't own whiteout or erasers to erase the mistakes in our autobiography. So even though the future may be sucky, we can't travel back in time. If you fail, don't beat yourself up. Learn from those experiences and keep writing because only you can write your story. Congrats class of 2021. It's been a pleasure meeting all of you. We did it. Hello everyone. As your member of parliament, I am truly honored to join you for this special celebration. Graduation is a time filled with pride and memories when we celebrate the end of one journey and the beginning of another. Graduates joining you today virtually are some of the people who have been with you and for you through the good and the bad, and I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge them. Your parents and family members, your classmates and friends, your school administrators, your teachers, and as you trek on in this journey we call life, these people will continue to be with you. In ways you may not realize, your teachers have helped you determine who you are and how you think. Your friends may remain by your side or be a text message, email, or Snapchat away. Your parents and family members will continue to guide and support you, but also give you room to grow and mature as young adults. Life will take you to new places. You will meet new opportunities and faces. At times, you will feel passionate, content, and enthusiastic. And at other times, well, you might just think, my life really sucks. In his first victory speech, President Barack Obama said, the road ahead will be long. Our climb will be steep. We may not get there in one year or even in one term, but, I have never been more hopeful that we will get there. The U.S. president was, of course, talking about the war in Iraq, the health of our planet, the economic crisis, but it is message of perseverance, of hope, 
and of change that is universal. Obama earned the respect of others, regardless of their race, age, gender identity, sexuality, or social class. Through hard work and determination, he started off as a community organizer who believed he could make a difference. As a racialized person of color, he faced naysayers who said he would never become the U.S. president. But he did. Obama earned the respect of others. Graduates, the reality is that life isn't always fair. What we can do, however, is to demonstrate our character and show that we merit respect. So I offer you a few things to remember. Number one, we must challenge the status quo. It is only by questioning the way things are, the things we know, and the things that we are taught that the world can change for the better. Number two, we must fuel our human thirst for learning and knowledge and strive to grow each and every day of our lives. Number three, we must protect the health of our planet. And this, I believe, is the greatest challenge of our generation. Number four, we must show that we care for and value others through our kindness and generosity. And finally, we must be resilient in the face of adversity. Graduates, this year has been difficult due to COVID-19, but here we are and we have made it thus far. Know that when we fall down and experience difficult times, we must get up and know that tomorrow is a new day and the sun will rise again. If you do all these things, grads, you will certainly respect yourself and earn the respect of others. Graduates, congratulations on this very important milestone in your life. As your federal member of parliament and as a former school board trustee, let me tell you how incredibly proud I am of your accomplishment. I wish you every success on your journey ahead. Best of luck and congratulations. Dear graduates of the class of 2021, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, congratulations to you. Each of you has achieved an incredible personal milestone, a truly remarkable accomplishment in your life that will allow you access to exciting future. As you bid farewell to your friends and teachers, I hope you will hold memories of your school experiences close to your heart. May you continue to grow in grace and live your life as a caring, responsible citizen and a proud grad of a Toronto Catholic High School. I wish you all the best as you take this next step on your academic journey. Congratulations, graduates of the class of 2021. Thank you. Stay safe. Congratulations, graduates. It is an honor to share in this celebration of your success today. Graduation ceremonies are among my favorite milestones as students mark this important passing from one phase of their lives to the next. We are grateful to be able to come together virtually to celebrate this incredible achievement in your life. Now I know that this virtual celebration is not what we had hoped graduation would be, as the last year has changed so dramatically for us all. This is now part of your story as a group of graduates. Your resiliency, your persistence, creativity, and your caring for one another is the unique marker of this graduating class. You've lived through and overcome what no one has before, and you will bring that sense of optimism and strength with you as you prepare for your next chapter. It's our hope that your success in high school will be just the first of many accomplishments and we know that you will continue to enjoy adventure and opportunity in your future studies and your future careers. Graduates, this is your moment to shine. You've earned this perhaps more so than any graduating class ever has. Celebrate all that you've accomplished and the friendships that you've made. And remember, learning doesn't stop once you leave school, whether you're bound for work college or university, we hope that you will continue to learn and grow, and that above all, that you will serve as wonderful role models to others, as caring and responsible citizens. 
Congratulations to each and every one of you. Congratulations to your family, moms and dads, aunts and uncles, grandparents, brothers and sisters, everyone who has supported you along the way. This, this time is for all of us. And please accept our best wishes on what comes next. I have no doubt of your future success, and I look forward to learning about your future accomplishments. God bless you all, our 2021 graduating class. And now I give you your blessing. Dear graduates, as you step forward into the world that awaits you, may God's blessing follow you wherever you go. May you walk safely along the pathways of your dreams. May his gentle hand guide the decisions you will make and the passions that you follow. May your hearts and lives always reflect his love and truth. May he comfort your fears with his divine presence. And may hope be a light within you that you will carry into each new day. We ask this blessing upon each of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations once again and God bless you all.